Good morning, everybody, and welcome to EJ's In the Know about whitewater kayaking. So today we're going to talk about paddles. Uh, paddles as in length, offset, bent shaft, straight shaft, the reasons, rolling, bracing, racing, freestyle, river running, uh, tall, short, you know, heavy, skinny, fat, all those things. Let's check it out. Here in my house, sun is just about to come up. It's a Saturday morning, uh, 7 a.m. And I just happened to have a brand new Warner Paddle Double Diamond, 30 degree offset, 200 centimeter length carbon paddle for my whitewater kayaking. I'm very excited. And that was the what spurred me into um, wanting to talk to you about paddles because I got a couple, um, couple comments on my... Uh, on some of my videos, uh, asking about paddles, what length, offset, bent shaft, straight shaft, and why. So I do have opinions on this, and yes, there are some uh, plenty of uh, personal uh, preferences out there. There's um, you may not want to do just what I'm doing. However, when you have the knowledge and have the information I'm about to give you, it will help you make good decisions instead of making decisions based on what your your friends are saying, your club is doing. Uh, it tends to be a, a regional thing. It tends to be a, uh, I don't know, we're all in the same club, so we do the same thing kind of a deal. Um, as a matter of fact, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, paddle lengths changed dramatically, and it was due to freestyle kayaking. Basically, the, there was this new concept that uh, if you wanted to cartwheel fast, a long paddle got in your way. So the shorter your paddle, the better you would do it cartwheeling, the better freestyle paddle you would be. Consequently, people went to way shorter paddles. Um, me, by the way, did not. And uh, yeah, I can throw in as like a madman. Um, you, pardon me one second, check out this paddle. As I walk over here, this is really critical part. I have to do this, sorry, I'll be right back, I'm coming. Okay, here I come. Sorry about that, but uh, I left my um, coffee over there, sorry. Thanks for indulging me. All right, let's get into it. Uh, let's talk about length, because we're already on the subject of length. This is a 200 centimeter paddle. Um, it is the longest Werner double diamond I can get. That's why it's 200 centimeters. What would it be if I could get any length I wanted? Probably be 201, 202. That is right. And for racing, um, like creek racing, like Homestead Creek or um, Gorge Games, because we don't have Gorge Games anymore. Any of the Colorado races, for example, um, any downriver race, green race, that type of thing, it would be probably 203. Ooh. Well, what's with that? Wow. What about people using 188s, 190s? Ooh. Man, I'm, I just don't get it. But let's talk about length. Okay. Why is length matter? Length matters for a variety of reasons. No pun, this is not supposed to be funny. So get your mind out of the gutter. But yeah, longer is better. Anyway, length. Number one, um, at the height you're sitting in your boat, and every boat floats at a different height. So for example, a slalom boat floats fairly high. Um, and, uh, oh, actually that depends on the slalom boat, doesn't it? Um, Let's make it easier for, let's just skip slalom for right now. So plastic whitewater kayaks, different boats sit at different heights. And how you jack your seat up or, or sit low on the boat determines the height. That affects how far down your paddle goes in the water without leaning down. So in the range that I'm sitting, whether I'm in a Nirvana, an Antics, a Mixmaster, or a Rockstar, for example, um, I'm able to reach the water and get the full blade in the water without having to re go down for every stroke. So when I go for a full, a full catch in the front, I can get the full blade in the water easily. If I um, don't have my paddle, I have to borrow a 192, 196, something like that. Every stroke, I've got to lean down to get it in the water. And the catch, the beginning part of the stroke, 
only about half the blade is in the water, much less of the blade. So I'm not getting as powerful of a catch. Uh, let's go to rolling and bracing. If you want to know whether uh, one of the most destructive things that ever happened in the kayak industry related to people's ability to roll and brace was when people used to use 206 centimeter paddles back in like the 80s. And then, then they started using under, under 200 and down to like 190s, for example, or really down to like 188. But short paddles wreck your roll and brace. And this is an easy thing for you to test in your swimming pool or your river or whatever. Get, go out there with two, um, you can use any paddle. And if you want to know what it's like to roll with a shorter paddle, choke up on it this way so that the, the, the blade is closer to your hand and then try rolling with that paddle. Now, if you want to know how a longer paddle affects it, choke up the other way, giving you a longer, to get, um, a longer paddle on that side, and then roll like that. You're like, Wah. And compare the difference. As you, if you choke up in a paddle, give yourself a longer paddle, it's like you can never miss a roll or a brace. When you go to a shorter one, you can feel how quickly it pulls down in the water. If you are um, a big guy, you're like 240 pounds, and you've got a short paddle, of 198, for example, um, you're, have, you're really handicapping yourself because you're, with that much more weight and power, you can pull the blade through the water and, and run out of stroke really quick. Now, if you're like, you know, 90 pounds and, um, you know, five feet tall and 90 pounds, um, uh, and probably use a paddle similar length and you're using a 198, you're going to be able to pull for a really long time and not run out of stroke. So it also depends on the size. But the reality is the, the variance in size of paddles is very small. And even more importantly, uh, blade sizes uh, don't change a whole lot. So uh, this Werner Double Diamond, I would consider this blade size is perfect for me. And I'm probably because I'm 160 pounds, five foot seven. I'm like a normal size person, so the paddle is designed um, for my size. Really, like yay, yay for me for being uh, five seven, 160 pounds, I guess. And then being a boat designer, there's always a boat my size too. <laughs> so if you're not my size, at Jackson Kayak, at least we try to make size boats all your sizes, right? Okay, um, but paddles. Uh, when, when my son Dane was 44 pounds, and now that he's 150 pounds, he was using the same blade size. What is with that? Paddle companies don't make a very wide variety of blade sizes. Now, Werner does make some, they make some big blades, uh, uh, but the, the, the actual variance in size isn't that great. So the length of the paddle is one way to take care of it. Okay, next is gonna be, um, so, to cut to the chase, if you are, um, so Dane was using a 200 centimeter paddle when he was probably, um, by the time he was 110 pounds, 100 pounds even, um, was he handicapped? Was he having a hard time cartwheeling? Was the blade too long getting away? No, he was able to reach the water. He was able to take good strokes, um, focus on good strokes, and he wasn't handicapped with a short paddle. Um, Emily, same thing. So my daughter Emily and my son Dane both use 200 centimeter paddles. And again, why do all three of us use 200 centimeter paddles? Because it's the longest one I can get from Werner. That's why. If Werner would make a 202, that's what I'd use. All right, so hope that helps. Um, next, let's go to uh, offset, blade offset. This happens to be a 30 degree offset. If you look down, that's, can you see it? 30 degrees. That would be 30 degrees, okay. Um, zero, 30, 45, 60, 90. Let's keep it simple. Um, there was a time where I used a 78 degree paddle. Uh, Why did I use a 78 degree paddle? Because five time world champion Richard Fox used a 78 degree paddle and I figured might as well start there. Um, that was in Sloan. Okay, I'll tell you how I think you should determine your blade angles. Okay, let's just start for one, a zero degree offset paddle. Who should use a zero degree offset paddle? Anybody who's doing a lot of freestyle kayaking, 
who wants to get really good at front loop or flat water loops, who wants to be able to back deck roll, like head dry back deck rolls to the left or to the right, not just one direction, zero degree paddle is good for you. There are downsides for the zero degree paddle and mostly they're related to the part where you're actually paddling. <laughs> and the reason there's a downside and the reason for the offset originally was because of like sea kayaking going into the wind. So a 90 degree paddle, when you take a stroke here, this blade would actually be slicing through the, through the headwind and not provide any drag. That's the reason uh, for the offset, for 90 degree offset. However, um, in whitewater kayaking, we got this really cool thing called current, takes us down the river, you know, slicing through the wind really isn't that big of a deal, is it? So no longer is that the deal. So in the 80s, people started going from 90 in slalom and racing, and by, back then, they were the best paddlers, or they were the most, certainly paddled the most. I averaged 500 times, 500 uh, kayaking sessions per year in the 80s and 90s in slalom. So those were the people who were out there the most, who had the most knowledge and most experience, and therefore um, were setting the trends. Um, in the, in the mid-90s, um, river runners, creek boaters, and freestyle kayakers started setting the trends because slalom paddlers were stuck in a rut, were no longer evolving, and um, paddlers like myself, Dan Gaviers, and people like that, we were um, creating a new trends because we were using new equipment and evolving with it. So uh, we became the, kind of the industry leaders in, in change with that. Okay. Here's how I determine the right paddle offset, and it is based on your forward stroke. With a zero degree paddle, I'm a right hand control. It's gonna be hard to demonstrate, so you're gonna to have to listen to my words. Um, with the right hand control, I take a stroke on the right side. It doesn't really matter what the left one is doing. When I bring my paddle up, watch my, my right arm. It's coming up, see the angle of my arm, this angle? Whatever angle that arm is, with your wrist straight, see my, my wrist, I'm gonna take this tag off. It's annoying me. There we go. So this is wrist cocked back, and this is wrist cocked down. With a straight wrist, which is the most powerful position, it doesn't give you tendonitis, it doesn't make you tired. Um, that is, a straight wrist is what you want to have when you're taking a left stroke. Remember, your right hand's in control, right? Right hand control. And if you're a beginning kayaker, step one, hold the pedal in such a way you put it on your uh, put it on your head. You should have right angles. That's the right position. Why? That's the most powerful position. Whether it be chin ups, e or bench press, wah, or paddle strokes. That's where you hold that. I'm glad we got through that. Next. Um, Assuming that um, you're going to be holding on to the right hand, if left hand is a bearing, right hand's in control, right? So your wrist is going to change based on what you're doing with your paddle. If you're going to brace, you're going to go like this. If you're going to do a low brace, you're going to do like that. It's a combination of your elbows and your wrist. With a forward stroke, you should not have to cock your wrist forward and back in order to do a forward stroke. That is based on the offset. So if you have a 90 degree offset paddle, when you take a left stroke, you've got to go like this. You've got to cock your wrist back to make it work. Does that make sense? If you have a zero degree offset paddle in that same place, you would have to cock your wrist forward like this. That position pushing with a wrist down is not a strong position and makes you tired. That is why a zero degree offset paddle isn't good for just paddling. If you're going to be in a race and you want to win a race and you're going to paddle for two minutes, five minutes, an hour really hard, a zero degree offset paddle is gonna strain your wrist, it's gonna make you tired, you're gonna have a harder time uh, winning that race. So based on your forward stroke, now the problem is you may or may not have a good forward stroke, but it is what it is. Based on the forward stroke, for me, when I go here, check it out, I've got a straight wrist, and my left blade is ready to stroke. And that is based on, now where is that offset coming from? That 30 degree offset, it's coming from my normal catch, my paddle position, my top arm position. That's gonna be where I'm gonna take my forward stroke. 
My blade is perfect position and I look, my wrist is good. Ooh, 30 degrees. Hey, what just happened to my uh, screen? Did a cloud come over to get dark? No, I don't know. I'm going to turn it off and turn it on. Let's give it a shot. Whew. Might have been. Are we still recording? I think so. Okay, good. Sorry about that. I think it's my screensaver is about to come on. Sorry. All right, so that's offset. Should you do 45 or 60? If you're here, if you if you if you get way up there on your on your catch and you find at 45 or 60 degrees, or just grab whatever paddle you have. So if I've got a 30 degree paddle and I'm, my wrist is straight, and this is where I do my catch, and if my paddle is angled like that and not not flat, that means that perhaps I should use a different offset. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. Now let's talk about bent shaft versus straight shaft. Now I've been using bent shaft since 1988. The Lendl Double Torque, once again, Richard Fox was the first one to adapt it. And it makes perfect sense. And there's two reasons to use a bent shaft whitewater kayak. Reason number one, again, it's a wrist thing. When you reach way forward, so to look at my wrist, see how it's bending it back, bending the wrist. Now, so watch my catch position right here. My wrist is slightly bent back, isn't it? Now what happens if I go up to here, to, the, to a straight shaft that's way bent back? Down here, you put your wrist in a better position. Now, there, I used to use a lightning paddle that had a more aggressive bend. And if you ask me, that was a better bend because my wrist wasn't um, turned at all. Now, bottom line is that uh, Warner makes the best paddle overall. Like, they're the best in manufacturing. The design is great. But if you ask me, they need a little bit more bend in it. But it is what it is. It's what I've got. It works good. Um, and But if, you, if I were to change this paddle, I would add a little bit more bend, a little more aggressive on the, on the, the bend shaft part. Why? Because I don't want my wrist to be bent back at all. That's why. Okay. But that's one reason for, a, um, for the bend shaft is that your, your, your hands are in a better position during the point when you're in the most powerful stroke, and that's the beginning of the catch. So instead of having a bent wrist, which gives you tendonitis here, and by the way, if you get tendonitis here in your forearm, um, or even in your shoulders, you might be using a straight shaft. Um, anyway, the bent shaft helps with that. It also helps on the wrist, too. Two more reasons to use bent shaft. Um, you know how you use, you know, with how lever works, you know, the, like a like a pry bar, the further the longer it is, the, the more leverage you get, easier to do. Well, a lot of what you're trying to do with a paddle is control the blade angle, right? But when you're with a straight shaft paddle, you're just holding onto a round or oval shaft, and you're twisting like this. With the bench shaft, you you're getting the distance you're getting away from the center line. You essentially have a bigger lever, you have more leverage over that blade angle. It gives you more control um, with less energy over your blade angle. If you're stuck in a hole and you're surfing around, you've got the ability to, um, to, to maneuver that blade angle um, with less energy. In fact, it's almost twice the distance from the center line of the shaft out here, meaning it takes half the energy to manipulate the blade angles when you have water, and resistance against it, water resistance. Uh, that's another reason. Reason number three, you're, uh, when you're kayaking, you're, you're catching edge, you, you bang a rock and your paddle slips, you're upside down, you hit something, or you're just upside down, you can't see your paddle. A bench shaft with your eyes closed, you can feel that, that bench shaft and you can get your hands in the right position. You know based on that bend where your paddle is without your eyes open. With a straight shaft, it's like, well, I don't know, it's all the same. Now, yes, you can put like a, an index on your straight shaft, you can put um, tape on your straight shaft. There's a lot of things you can do to, um, to help you have a, a, a reference point with a straight shaft, but with a bent shaft that's built right in, and it's way more effective to know where your paddle is. So where your paddle is, leverage over the thing, and it's better on the wrist. Um, now, this is a brand new paddle. I'm not taking it out like this. 
this is this is the next thing. This is just how to outfit your paddle. So yeah, you need to outfit your paddle. So this is a really nice out of the mold, shiny um, carbon shaft. Well, what happens when it gets wet? What happens, okay, I don't wear sunscreen, so I don't have the oily sunscreen hand issue. But the worst case, you wear sunscreen, your hands are oily, and you got a shiny shaft here. It's slippery. Slippery is a real problem. Top hand tends to slip inwards like this. Um, it tends to slip in your hand. How do you fix that? Pure electrical tape. Old school, at the hardware store, I use black, then use yellow and orange. Electrical tape. And when you're using the electrical tape, you wrap it from the, the edge end of the shaft in. And the way I do it is I lay it down on something, I start the tape, I hold it, and I just twist the paddle, and I overlap half of the, uh, overlap the tape halfway, and it creates ridges. And the ridges are such that when you're going, when your hand moving this way, those ridges catch your hand. So it keeps your, your paddle, your hand from sliding inwards, one. But two, assuming you don't have greasy hands, the grip on the shaft is at least double. The friction is at least double what it is without putting tape on it. Reason number three for putting on uh, tape is these bends. When you throw this in the back of a truck, you're banging around in the back of a pickup truck or against stuff when you're traveling on a roof or whatever, these corners take a lot of wear. The tape um, eliminates that wear. Now the tape gets worn, but you just pull it off and put new tape on. So electrical tape, Prevent your hands from slipping, also protects the shaft of the paddle. And if you are to break a shaft, it's going to be usually breaking the bends because that's where it gets nicked and, and messed up. Uh, blade shapes. So I always use a foam core paddle. Why do I use foam core? Two reasons. Um, one, foam core is a much more of a wing shape instead of having a big rib in the middle. And see these ribs right here in the double diamond? Ultimately, it'd be better if they didn't have those. But, um, but it serves a purpose structurally, um, but aerodynamically or um, with water resistance, it'd be better if it was perfectly smooth. But anyway, um, a foam core paddle slices through the water feathers very smoothly where you'll, you'll have twice the resistance with a, a fiberglass blade, like a thin fiberglass blade, solid blade with the rib in the middle. When you go like this, you can feel that water resistance it isn't nearly as smooth, um, and I don't like that. So anyway, foam core, much smoother. And this is a nice blade shape, minus the little, the little rib there. Now, the other benefit of foam core is, woo, foam core floats. And it's, you, it's something you can really feel. When you're upside down getting ready to roll, you can feel this double diamond, for example, floating upwards a lot with a lot more power than you can with a Werner paddle with fiberglass blades. The fiberglass blades do not float, and therefore they're just kind of neutral in the water where the double diamond really floats up. And of course, if somebody swims and you're going down the river, a foam core paddle is nice and up and on the top, where the fiberglass ones are underwater a lot, getting swirled around the eddy line. So anyway, from a safety point of view, in that case, uh, this is even better. And then if you wrap your, use uh, like yellow or orange tape like Dane does or red or something, instead of just solid black, it's easier to find also. Well, that pretty much covers, uh, covers the basics for, for paddle. Um, the general trend and the general advice you're going to get from kayak schools, you go to kayak schools, like famous ones are supposed to be like whiz -bang kayak schools, and they'll hand a six foot one dude 198 centimeter paddle. It's like, hey, you want to learn to paddle? The poor guy is handicapped before he even gets in the water. It's the stupidest thing of all time. Uh, you do not have to handicap yourself. Uh, if, you just, if you do nothing other than get a longer paddle, you're going to find staying right side up. You're not going to get as tired. You can take less strokes and get to the same place. You're going to be able to roll better, brace better, um, and generally perform better. Um, so, uh, so hopefully one day Warner will make me a 203 centimeter paddle. Ooh. But for now, the 200 centimeter paddle, this is the best paddle on the market, in my opinion, um, and which is why I use it. So anyway, Warner Double Diamond 203, right 30, is the paddle for me. 
I should say the paddle is available for me. What would I paddle? I'd paddle a 203 or 202 uh, 30 degree offset um, right hand control. All right, folks, that wraps up my paddle. If you have any questions, put it in the comments section. Remember, if you hit the subscribe button down there, you become a, uh, get your, subscribe to my channel. And what that means is you'll get notifications when I put up other videos like this one. But there's two other types of videos I'll do. I do fishing videos, and then in two days, on Wednesday, Wednesday is 11 a.m., my two cents. That is hope, good, bad, or mediocre advice by Eric Jackson on all kinds of topics. And I got some good comments from last time, so we'll see you there in two days, 11 a.m.